Hi there, this is Mr Evans. This video uh, is looking at profitability ratios and specifically uh, return on capital employed. So um, once you have a good understanding of what the balance sheet is, what the income statement is, what it shows, what all of those different terms are on there, um, we can start to get into um, looking at these different uh, financial ratios, the different ratio analysis that you need to um, do. And just a quick point on this, it's uh, really important that you know what ratios that um, are required of you for the specification because questions could come up on them. Um, you need to know the formulas for each one and you need to know what it tells you because if you know uh, what the ratio tells you, then you can use that information to support an answer in an exam question. And that's really what this is all about. It's really helping you build an argument, build your analysis in an exam question. And, um, you know, what I often tell my students is that the accounts paint a picture that you can't see uh, in the uh, case study that they give you. If you don't understand the numbers, um, you don't have the full picture of the company. So it's really important that you spend some time getting to know all these ratios because they, they, they're a really uh, good way of accessing high marks. So um, I've defined profitability ratios before. They basically measure how efficient a firm is at, is at generating profit, that should probably say. Measure how efficient a firm is at generating profit. Um, the new one for you this year is return on capital employed, but uh, I've got videos in this in 3.5 and I'll link them to this video. You also need to know these three uh, profitability ratios as well from AS um, because they can also help support you um, when you are analysing a company's financial performance. Uh, but this video is going to focus on return on capital employed. Um, and uh, what return on capital employed tells you is the uh, efficiency with which a firm generates profits from the money invested into the business. Well, if you've got a good understanding of these different terms in this formula, then you'll, you'll understand why, uh, what it shows you. So first of all, the operating profit. Now remember, the operating profit is basically revenue minus total costs. So this is like money that the business has earned from its normal day-to-day -day activities. You know, there's no special one-off items here. We haven't considered tax. This is our operating profit. And what we're dividing our operating profit is by is the total capital employed. Well, how do we, how do we um, um, calculate total capital employed? Well, it's the total equity. Now, remember, total equity is the amount of money that shareholders have invested in the company plus non-current liabilities. And non-current liabilities are money the business has, borrow, uh, has borrowed. So what is total capital employed? Well, total capital employed is the amount of money that has been invested into the business. So when you understand that what we're doing is we're taking the amount of money that the business has earned from its normal day-to-day -day operations and we're dividing that by the total amount of money that has been invested into the business um, by both uh, shareholders and through borrowing, then what we're doing is we're finding out how efficiently this money that's been invested into the business is um, being used to generate a profit. So let's look at an example. So these are the figures that were given in the 2017 um, uh, case study. And what we can see, return on capital employed, well, we're given the... What you need to get really good at is understanding what information you've been given by the exam board. Now, because I know how to calculate total capital employed, I can see that I've been given the total equity, the non-current liability, so I can work out capital employed and I've also got the operating profit down here so I need to read between the lines when I get into the exam and think right the examiner has given me the information to calculate return on capital employed they might not even ask for it in a question but I can use this to support my analysis and um, maybe if there were a question on um, uh, shareholders um, I could use this in that answer so um, Let's just uh, run through uh, the figures. Uh, so I'm going to calculate it for 2016, 489. 
uh, and here are the other figures here that I need total equity, non current liabilities. So the operating profit was 489, equity, non current liabilities, that gives me uh, 489 divided by 7105 and gives me a return on capital employed of 6.89%. Now, what's the significance of this figure? What it means is for every one pound that has been invested into the business, either by shareholders um, or by uh, debt capital, borrowed money, for every one pound that's been invested in the business, I'm getting a return of 6.89%. In other words, I'm getting um, almost seven pence um, back for every pound that's been invested into the business in terms of profit. Of course, that might not all come to me in terms of a dividend, um, but for every pound invested in the business, this business is generating almost um, uh, seven pence from that pound. But uh, that means very little on its own. What we might want to do is compare it to a rival or see how the business is getting on over time. So. When I do the same calculation for 2015, I find out that the figure at that stage was uh, about 9%. So for every pound invested in the business, I was generating 9% in 2015. 2016, that's actually fallen um, to uh, close to 7%. Um, so we can see this, this company is going uh, the wrong way. And that would be interesting for me as a shareholder, be interesting for me as a manager, um, be interesting for all sorts of people to uh, look at that and understand it. So how could we improve return on capital employed? Well, if we increase revenue without increasing costs, if we cut costs without reducing revenue, those are essentially ways of increasing our operating profit. And of course, there's hundreds of ways that a business might go about uh, trying to achieve those targets, but that's the basic thing. If we can improve operating profit, get more money um, without increasing capital employed, that will improve our return on capital employed. On the other hand, we could pay back our debts, pay back our long-term loans. We could do a share buyback where the management of the company buys back shares from investors so there's less uh, equity in the business. We could also increase dividend payments to reduce the amount of retained profit which forms part of that shareholder equity. Either way these are all measures that would reduce the total capital employed and if we can keep the same amount of profit and reduce the total capital employed of course that will have a beneficial impact on the return on capital employed. So, uh, just a final slide about how we interpret return on capital employed. The higher the better, an improving figure over time is a sign of improving performance. Um, we could compare it with interest rates. So, for example, um, interest rates in the UK are about 0.5% at the moment. Um, savings accounts are uh, not particularly rewarding. So, if I put my £1 into a bank, I get 0.5%, half a penny back. If I invest in uh, the company we just looked at, I get almost 7 pence back. So, that might encourage me to take the risk of investing in the company. Of course, we could also compare it to other companies as well. So we look at the return on capital employees from a range of potential investments. Um, most companies would be happy with 15 to 20 percent ROCE. I mean, this figure is um, very much dependent on the industry, on economic conditions, on rivals. So, you know, this 15 to 20 percent would people would be very happy with. There's not really an ideal level for return on capital employed. You just want it to be higher than the interest rate and preferably improving over time.